The first tablet to finally get the Google Play Edition treatment can be somewhat considered a Nexus 8. Well, with that in mind, how does it compare to the original Nexus tablet? Well, that is what we're here to find out, because it's Josh Vergara from Android Authority. What's going on, everybody? And this is the LG G Pad Google Play Edition versus the Nexus 7. <laughs> In one corner, the Nexus line continues its tradition of minimalism, and in the other, LG returns to the tablet game, seemingly knowing what piques the interest of the customer. The Nexus 7 gets a soft touch plastic build and puts the Nexus logo in landscape on the back, which provides a very sleek look. The tablet is actually quite pocketable and can be easily gripped in one hand. Speaking of which, it just feels really nice in the hand with that soft touch plastic. On the other hand, the G-Pad takes a mix of plastic that meets in the back with an aluminum slab in the middle. That aluminum slab is definitely an addition to a pretty good build quality to begin with, and it makes the entire device quite attractive, especially in black, which is what this Google Play Edition comes in. The 8.3 inch screen does make this a little bit less pocketable, but it is just over, just a little bit over, the zone of comfort for a one-handed grip. While one could argue that the aluminum slab on the back of the LG G-Pad does afford it maybe a couple more points in terms of its overall build quality, we will say that both of these tablets feel really nice in the hand and ultimately it is up to what size you need, but of course that is because of the displays. When it comes to those displays, it is an unabashed battle of sizes, as both of the screens otherwise offer similar experiences. A 1920 by 1200 resolution is found in both of these devices, and the pixel density might be a little bit lower in the larger screen of the G-Pad, but it is a bigger screen, which means the tablet will be farther away from your face, making text ultimately still more than adequately sharp anyway. Now a 7 inch screen is not too shabby at all and you'll have a good time watching HD content on this wonderful screen, but if you want something just a little bit bigger and you really want your media to really stand out because of a larger screen, 8.3 inches in the LG G-Pad just might do it for you. So ultimately it comes down to which one is better for you in terms of the size. Once you get underneath the surface, things start to look a little bit more similar. You might think that this battle is a little bit one-sided, but just because the Snapdragon S4 Pro returns in the Nexus 7 here doesn't mean it isn't updated. After all, the Nexus 7 comes with the Crate 300 variation of the S4 Pro, which actually puts it closer on par with the Snapdragon 600 that is found in the LG G-Pad. I have really had no problems with the Nexus 7 in terms of its performance ever since its release, and even if it says S4 Pro, it definitely feels more like 600 performance. In my LG G-Pad Google Play Edition review, Armando Ferreira commented that the LG tablet might as well be sporting the Snapdragon 800 because it feels like it does. Well, I tend to agree, but the good part here is that the Nexus 7, even with its Snapdragon S4 Pro, still manages to not fall that far behind at all. Once we make it to hardware, really depending on how you look at it, the LG G-Pad actually somewhat benefits from not being a Nexus device. After all, the Nexus 7 keeps it pretty simple. 16 or 32 gigabytes of onboard storage is not expandable, and it does have a battery with a decent capacity and thus provides a good longevity. The LG G-Pad on the other hand does have an SD card slot at the top, allowing it to have more media via your SD cards. And then it comes with a massive 4600 milliamp hour battery that provides very good longevity on a screen that is a little bit larger and with a processor that's a little bit more powerful. Otherwise, both of these tablets pretty much have all the same bits and pieces inside that allow it to perform a lot of the same types of tasks. So in the end, if expandable storage is something that you really want, and I know a lot of you out there really pine for it, well, the LG G-Pad has got your back in this comparison. When it comes to the cameras, stock Android makes its appearance on both of these devices and thus provides a similarly minimal feature set either way. It comes with panorama, HDR, and also the photosphere. However, both of these 5 megapixel shooters provide only really decent photos and pretty comparable ones at that. Tablet photography is a little more accepted with these smaller tablets, but your phone in your pocket probably provides better pictures anyway. So you should probably put this one aside and I'll let the other ones do the work. And finally, we make it to the software, which is really the crux of this comparison. After all, what makes this such an important battle is stock Android. Android 4.4 KitKat brings the quintessential experience from the Nexus to the first Google Play Edition tablet. The LG G-Pad now gets the experience that us Android purists really love. The simplistic notification drop-down with the power widget shade, uh, the simple home screens, the app drawer, and the powerful Google Now application, all alongside these aesthetic choices that the new version of Android KitKat brought into the fray. It is also optimized for speed and gives you exactly what you need, quite elegantly, actually. 
In the end, what is so great about the Google Play edition of the LG G Pad is that if you wanted the stock Android experience, you don't necessarily need to go for a Nexus anymore. But of course, the deciding factor here is obviously the price. With the Nexus 7 coming in at $229 at the base model, and then the LG G Pad coming in at $349, does $100 justify a somewhat larger screen, expandable storage, and perhaps arguably somewhat better build quality? Well, honestly, that is what makes this comparison so great. Because even if the price point of the LG G Pad is still a little too steep for you, then you can get the Nexus 7. It's just a little bit smaller, but comes at a much better price point for all that it is able to do. And it is very stellar and does all of it very well. But for a hundred extra dollars, if you wanted a mid-sized uh, Nexus or stock Android-like experience, you have it in the LG G Pad between the Nexus 7 and the Nexus 10, with a couple of extras built in for your benefit. As always, thank you guys very much for watching, and I hope you enjoyed this comparison of the LG G Pad Google Play Edition versus the Nexus 7. Stay tuned to Android Authority for all of the best coverage, especially our CES coverage because it is around the corner. But Christmas is next week, so happy holidays to all of you no matter what holiday you celebrate, and keep it tuned here. Drop us likes on our videos, subscribe to our channel if you haven't already, and follow all of us on social media. And as always, keep it tuned to this channel because we are your source for all things Android.